and then she reached her hand to the matchbox and lit my hand and I was there crying for help but she moved away with her stool close to the door and continued knitting within her hand. So I was helplessly screaming for help. Neighbors were knocking, but she wouldn't open. And feeling desperate, I think after the yarn was burnt, I was able to remove one hand, the right hand. Hello, welcome to Lapis Lazuli. My name is Liz Odualo. Always a privilege to be able to have you join us uh, on our page we've been very encouraged by the views and uh, we continue uh, requesting for you to be able to keep viewing sharing our page and uh, just being able to allow god to be able to be spread all over thank you so much uh, i know that uh, we've started the, um, the youtube uh, channel and i would request you to be able to please subscribe to our channel so Today we are going to talk about a very important topic that uh, many times knowingly or unknowingly it affects us in very many ways uh, because I know that uh, this is something that uh, affects humanity because um, if we don't deal with it, it's able to really just um, distract us in a, a, a very uh, deep way you know and that is bitterness and forgiveness and what makes us not to forgive many times is because of bitterness and so let's talk about what is bitterness bitterness is uh, getting angry or being angry disappointed at being treated unfairly being treated unjustly or um, even when you're hurt by someone and you feel that it was an insult or, or pain that you went through because of somebody or something that happened, it easily ends up in resentment. And that is bitterness. Now, as we grow up, things are done to us. You know, people do things to us. And um, uh, many times you find that things that were done to you when you were young still carry on, you know, up to even our adulthood. You know, and uh, you can live a bitter life very many years later. And so today, uh, a very special, we have a very special guest. And uh, I have to share that uh, this is a very special uh, day because it's our first interview. It's our first, um, uh, we are doing the first uh, sharing on the lapis table. So... Uh, the lady who's going to be sharing is very special. She's a very special uh, friend of mine and I've known her for at least the last eight years now. And uh, she's a very hardworking uh, woman. But I don't want to say many things. Let me just uh, let her be able to introduce herself. So I'll start by asking her to introduce herself, tell us who she is, uh, what she does, and some things that we do not even know about her, she can be able to share with us. Hi everyone. Thank you so much. My name, thank you so much, Lisa. My name is Eunice Adiambo. I am, I am a mother of three beautiful girls, married to one handsome man, Mr. Victor, out there, sending my love. <laughs> yes, uh, I am a teacher by prof profession. But I also do. I, do, I also have a small personal business. I I take care of your the inner wares. Kingara inje nangara nangara dani pia. Everywhere. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. That is basically about. Wow. Myself. Thanks for sharing about yourself. Now, uh, maybe you can tell us how you grew up. How was it growing up for you? Well, growing up for me. Um, we lived in uh, Madari slums at my very early years, at least what I can remember. We lived in Madari slums when Madari slums was really slums, mm. not what it is today. Wow. <laughs> yes, so the early, the early stages of my life, that is where we, are, we were. Mm -hmm. And then now, you know, some faces in your life disappear and others you can remember. So 
uh, part of my adulthood, maybe uh, from eight years moving forward, we were in Madare mm -hmm. So that's where I grew up. Uh, I was raised up in a family of 12 children, wow. where I happened to be the second born. Mm. <laughs> yes, uh, my, my elder brother is late. Mm. And we also lost um, our, our fourth born our fourth born sister, mm -hmm. while we lived in Madare North, uh, she fell from the last, the last floor of the building where we were staying. Wow. Yeah, yeah so currently we are 10. Mm -hmm. yes, um, we thank God. Yeah. <laughs> we wow. thank God, yes. Mm -hmm. so, Thanks for sharing. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you grew up in Madare when Madare was Madare. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's really um, amazing. I can just only imagine how it is to look, uh, to be, but hopefully you can take us there as we continue. So let me ask something. Okay, you told us growing up, you were, life was just nice, you know, in this big family, you know. Are there any memories you have about growing up? You know, maybe anything that ever happened to you that really changed your life? Well, um, I think by the time we were in Madare slums, not so many of my siblings were born yet because I only remember of my elder brother, myself, and my follower who I also, yeah, those are the only people I capture. So from our, our third born, I really don't think the rest were born or either I can't remember. Yeah, so one thing that really happened during the time we lived in Madare slums is I, I used to eat uh, so Udongo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, the walls of the houses in that particular place were made of clay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what you call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, it's clay, the red, yes. the red soil. Yes, the red yeah. soil. Mm -hmm. So I will eat that. I don't know what it used to do to me, but mm -hmm. it was just sweet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, remember one time, there's one particular house mm -hmm. I love eating from. <laughs> A certain corner. A certain corner. It was just sweet. Mm -hmm. So I will go and eat, and then one time I realized, oops, I made a hole. I didn't actually <laughs> see inside. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so I will do that mm. innocently. I don't know why I used to do that. I was barely three to four years. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So sometimes when you do things as a child, you don't know who is watching. And unless an adult comes and, and, and corrects you, you don't know if it's wrong. You see? So I think there's one of our neighbors who reported to mom. Yes, so a neighbor went and reported to mom. I don't know how long I was under monitoring and evaluation <laughs> from that time. But the next thing I remember, actually, I don't know if mom was waiting to catch me red-handed someday, but I think now this particular time she caught me red-handed when I was actually feeding on soil now from the playing ground where we were playing. <laughs> And she just then I, she just grabbed me and took me to the house and she didn't talk much. She just like put me on on the chair and things happened so fast. I really didn't understand uh, what the motive was, but you know when you're a child, the adult knows better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she took a cup and she went out to close the door. Things were happening so fast closed the door and then she came with different samples of soil and like different types, mixed on the cup, stirred with some warm water and forced me to drink. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess maybe that was a maybe therapeutic, it was maybe supposed to help me stop doing that. Mm -hmm. As if that was not enough, uh, she pulled me with a stool and like close to her and uh, she wasn't talking so she took a paper like you see the package of the one that uh, uh, wheat flour is packed in X. I can actually remember it was the X. <laughs> yes, the X Ugagano. Mm -hmm. And she removed the the little flour that was inside, emptied it in a container, and then put my hand inside it. Wow. And then she used to knit a lot. Mm -hmm. And then she took uh, she took a few of her yarn, like just unrolled the yarn and tied my hand. I still don't know what to expect. 
and then she reached her hand to the, it was just a one room house. Mm -hmm. She reached her hand to uh, a container that had paraffin mm -hmm. and poured on my hand, tied. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So she poured perfume on my hand. And then she reached her hand to the matchbox and lit my hand and I was there crying for help but she moved away with her stool close to the door and continued knitting, knitting her hand. So I was helplessly screaming for help, neighbors were knocking but she wouldn't open. And feeling desperate, I think after the yarn was burnt, I was able to remove one hand, the right hand. So my hand, the left hand had already caught fire. And in desperation, I lit the curtain. Next to me, there was a curtain because the, the bed was partitioned, the room was partitioned with a curtain so that the bed is on the other side. So I lit the curtain and the curtain, I think, now got the mattress. Mm -hmm. And the only thing she could rescue <laughs> was saving the house from fire. So she rose up and uh, tried to like rescue the situation there. So that is how I got my way out of the house. That is when I was able to, because she was seated there so that I could not pass. She was blocking the door. So I opened and ran outside. And I, I was so desperate to get water. And the next water that was there was from a drainage. So I guess it was sewer water. And I dipped my hand inside. So today I'm old and I can know the reaction that perhaps it was acidic. And when I removed my hand, at that point I was like, <laughs> because <laughs> the hand was white. Like the skin remained inside. Yeah. So that was the ordeal then, and uh, I sat out there until it became dark, and now people were coming back from work. At that time, Dad also came back. All that time she was inside. So Dad came back from work with a friend of his, and I think I was still asleep. I fell asleep, but you see that car? <laughs> yeah, you cried until... until wow. Yeah, so uh, he had a torch, so yeah, uh, he didn't really know who was crying there, but when he held my hand, he held the hand that was actually burnt, and I really screamed. Yeah, and I can't really remember dad's reaction, because even up to date, he's not a man who reacts a lot. So <laughs> all I remember is he kept on clicking and clicking and trying to maybe get ready to take me to hospital. Yeah, so from there, the next thing, I think I just found myself in hospital, with my hand bandaged. I can't remember the healing process, but up to there, it's so fresh, like it happened yesterday. Wow, yeah. wow. thanks for sharing. That is really, really deep, even as you're sharing. It's, um, wow. And how old were you when all this was happening? Like I said, I, like I said, I think I was around three, four years. Three years, four years. So it happened when you were three, and you still can remember. It is so fresh. Mm. It's like something I watched mm. yesterday. I think for me, what is um, is uh, as you're sharing, I'm thinking, wow, well, you know, there are times we do things to children, and uh, we don't even know that. Um, they they will remember. You know, we just think they are small. They are young. You know, uh, but it's it's clear, you know, whatever we do, even to a young child, they remember, they live with it, you know. Wow. So now you've gone to hospital, you've woken up, you now 
there is the bandage um, in your hand. How are you feeling? Actually, let me, let me actually just take you back a little bit. How, what were you feeling? What was the feeling then, actually, during that time? What were you feeling? I had mixed feelings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was feeling like perhaps that was the right way of correction because maybe I, I, I don't know. She knew what was best, so yeah. I didn't really know what to feel. But I was feeling a, a resentful, feeling not worthy, mm -hmm. uh, wishing that maybe I should have just died instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so a mixed, a mixed feeling. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now, as you are growing up, now you healed, and uh, definitely you grew up with that. Um, that yeah, so you still have the scar. Yes, I still have the scar. It's a scar I have to live with. Mm. How did it affect you? Probably like as you are growing up, did you, did you, at what point did you realize, hey, by the way, I'm different? Mm. Well, uh, I think for children, Things, things happen and then we easily let go. That is why I think God says that unless we get the heart of a child, <laughs> we will not see heaven. So uh, in, uh, even after that, I think shortly after I was able to move on and realize that I was the one who was on the wrong mm. and I was being corrected, you know. So I grew up normally like any other child. But now when I reached uh, uh, my by preteen, pre teenage, yeah. you you start getting that feeling. Yeah. Even your age mates are like, when what happened to your hand? Mm. They keep on questioning and sometimes you feel like you're being isolated because of that. Mm. <laughs> yes, and as you're growing up you now realize how hey, people are wearing Q Tex, mm. maybe you don't see the need. Yeah. So there there are many things mm. you feel as you're growing up. But the yeah. point I, I became to rea I started realizing um different is maybe sana sana towards teenage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so as a teen how was it knowing that this was caused by someone who was very special to me and now i have to keep uh, being different and uh, also maybe um, what are some of the comments that you had people make that maybe affected you in one way or another uh, well <laughs> The, the most ironical thing I would experience is when visitors come to the house mm. and you know, I, I, when you're a teenager you're of course expected to help in things in the house. I like know, serving. <laughs> serving. <laughs> so true. you go serving a visitor and the visitor just quickly takes notice because the sky is quite big mm. and they're like, uh, uh, <laughs> they would call my mom, Mama Kony, what happened to you Mrs. Hunt? Mm. You know, and they touch like trying to feel sorry for you. Mm. Like people will feel sorry for me mm. so much. <laughs> and mom will go like, ah, mchezo mingi tu alichomeka, you know. And that would make me feel like, why can't she have the, the courage, like have the courage and just say, I burnt her, you know. <laughs> I would feel like I need to get it out of her mouth wow. for her. Yeah, so if a visitor insisted, she would say, alichomeka na maji and the thing is rubbed off. Another one next time, Miwuji. Another one. So there was no one particular thing that really caused it, according to her. I think she assumed I was young. Yeah. And because they never told me, so I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I had to swallow all that all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would run to the room and just cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So how you dealt with it? Actually, I wanted to hear. Uh, you, uh, I like what you say. So many times you go to the room and cry out. And uh, so, what are some of the things that you would do now, especially when people would uh, say those things that um, were affecting you? What are some of the things that you did? Like now, anger. And I will, be, I will become bitter, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly I would isolate myself because mm -hmm. it really took away my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody keeps on commenting on your hand, yeah. you think like. Beauty is all about having yeah. some beautiful hand or something. Mm. So I would isolate myself. And um, part of my growing up, I played a lot with boys and girls. Mm. Like, so I don't know if that was a good Probably. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That must have been very difficult. Wow. Yeah. That must have been very a very challenging time that you went through. And thank you for sharing this. Yeah. So now. Um, 
at what point did you realize that, man, I need a change? Because uh, what you went through, the, the pain, the bitterness, as you're saying, the bitterness of feeling like, man, someone I loved, someone I treasured, someone I, I respected did this to me. You know, and I'm actually trying to think of myself and the times that um, I had to deal with my, uh, with uh, maybe heart and pain, because that is very uh, crucial. And um, there are times personally for me, I would really cry out, I would withdraw, you know, as you're saying. And uh, I remember sometimes I would really just uh, be there. Uh, I'm there physically, but emotionally I've withdrawn, you know, I'm not there emotionally, you know. Um, so I want to maybe hear from you. Uh, so after going through all that, I'm sure it created a void in your heart, you know, because you're feeling like I'm living this life. But it's like living a double life, you know, uh, outside, I am this person who looks well, fine, you know, but inwardly, I'm dying because of this anger that I feel. How did you come out of that? Well, uh, this affected me quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, when I moved to high school, mm -hmm. I, I boarded. So, <laughs> in boarding, you know now, the moment you've joined from one, there's also this sense of you've grown, you're becoming independent. And I will literally tell my dad, if mom is the one who is coming to visit, then I'm fine. You mm -hmm. guys, you don't really have to visit me in school. I'm, I'm actually fine. Mm -hmm. Yes, so she didn't know I resented mm -hmm. her that much. There are times she would come, but we didn't have nothing. Like, we didn't have much to talk about. Mm -hmm. I was so cold to her. I don't know if she realized. Mm -hmm. But dad will come and I would appreciate that I could have a gazette and maybe I would feel so excited wow. that it is dad who has come. Mm. And I don't know if dad knew it, but I will tell him it is okay for you to come. Yeah. You know? mm. So that's how my high school life was. Mm. And then now after high school, uh, shortly after I, I got married mm -hmm. and in my in my marriage this now, this anger, because it was not taken care of, started venting out, yeah. like, especially when I got my children, my firstborn. Mm. So, <laughs> I was, re I would easily get so angry. Mm. So angry, Nanifika Sirika, it happened so fast. Uh, I remember an instant that in Chapata Nakiti, mm. the, the small chairs mm. the, that she would sit on. So I would do anything, because for me, it's okay to actually inflict inflict uh, pain as long as the the mistake is take is corrected yeah. yes so that was me wow. and then in, in, along that journey of uh, of all this confusion and bitterness uh, a special neighbor mm -hmm. reached out to me and you see it's not like I was a, I wasn't a church going person mm -hmm. I grew up going to church mm -hmm. seeking God and in many ways yeah. I, I think I was trying to do the right thing. But now, uh, a lady reached out to me and she asked me, would you want to study the Bible and build your relationship with God wow. in a more personalized way? Mm. And for me, that was a bit special because mm. I felt like I know God mm. <laughs> and I have a relationship with Him. I pray, you know. Mm. But she was like, it doesn't harm mm. if you get to like just know what I'm about to introduce you to. Mm. And I was open to that. Mm. So we started studying the Bible mm. and looking at the word of God uh, so deeply, mm -hmm. I discovered like I, I was living in darkness. Mm. I was living in darkness mm. and that was the beginning of my turnaround. Wow. Wow. Yes. I, I just uh, appreciate as you're sharing uh, you know, they say hurt people hurt others, you know, and um, I, I think as you're speaking, you know, sharing how we were raised, if we were hurt, then it's easy to hurt someone else because we believe that that's how it's done, you know, and uh, so I'm, I'm appreciating you sharing that uh, at some point that's who you were even as a parent and it came out more as a parent. So maybe you can share with me, what is it or with us, what is it that now, was there maybe some scripture or something that um, really touched you to help you 
come of that, that darkness that you had lived inside with so much heart that was able to help you uh, get to who you are today? Well, uh, the, the, the Bible made it so clear that we have all sinned yeah. and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm. So this made me realize that there is no big sin mm. or small sin. Mm. So whatever pain mom inflicted on me, and what I am also perhaps doing to my daughter and other people, because sometimes we lie and we feel like lying is a small sin. Mm. So I realized we are all the same and we all need repentance. So that was one thing I realized as I was studying the Bible. And then I also discovered like, it looked so new, you know, every child knows that. <laughs> I remember growing up, they would bring for us cinemas, you know, watch movie Ayesu. Yeah. And we all knew that Jesus went through some suffering, mm -hmm. but it never connected to me so much uh, uh, before than now when I studied the Bible mm -hmm. and I looked at it, the suffering that Jesus Christ had to go through, mm -hmm. the betrayal, mm -hmm. <laughs> the disappointment, mm -hmm. and he took all that yeah. for my sake. Wow. So I realized that I'm carrying so much burden, so much baggage mm. that I can take to him because he tells me that bring your burden to me yeah. and exchange it with my yoke yeah. and my yoke is light. Mm. So yeah, that's really encouraging. So um, one of the scripture as you're sharing uh, is to see that um, um, uh, Jesus went through so much on that cross and uh, he suffered for me to have victory or for us to be able to be victorious and become, and, free. <laughs> and become free you know and the freedom is uh, not just outside and saying yes yes lord but it's experiencing it you experience that freedom in christ yes. wow so how did you know that you've forgiven or uh, like how do you know that wow now i think at this point i've let go well, like I said, there was this special lady, so uh, I, I was, the scriptures just led me to opening up to her. Mm. I told her one of the things that I'm so bitter about mm. that I, I don't know, I don't know if Jesus was, had gone through what I went through, mm. maybe he would have changed his mind. Mm. <laughs> maybe he would have found forgiveness so hard. Mm. And she was like, what, what is it that you see that Jesus went through that is so less compared mm. to what you went through? Yeah, so I was able to share with her my story, and she led me to forgiveness. Yes. Yeah, so it wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Many other times I told her I'm not ready, but we prayed about it. <laughs> there are those times I would pray and just tell God, uh, I have forgiven her. I have forgiven her, and I mean him and then Misha. <laughs> and then one time I still wake up and I find myself, I'm still, a, I'm still back to the same spot. I'm still feeling bad about it. Because it's not like I can cut my hand out yeah. and throw it away. Yeah. 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 So I was always back and forth. I've forgiven her, and I'll try and call and reach out to her. By the way, I never used to call her unless mm. she calls. I don't know if she realized. I never used to call, but if she calls, I'll pick out of respect. So thinking I'm forgiven, I will make those effort. Mm. You know, it's like duty, mm. making effort yeah. and even calling. And I have nothing to say. I'm just like, how are you, ma'am? Machine poa and machine poa sawa. And then I will still go back. Mm. <laughs> so for this journey to have been successful to where we are today, because for your information, we are best of friends today. Wow. <laughs> Tell us about We share that. a very special uh, bond. Mm. And I feel like most of the things that perhaps should have happened in my childhood, she compensated almost all, if not all. Wow. <laughs> yes, so I, I took a deliberate decision to go and talk to her about it. Like to make her know that I am aware of what happened, mm. even though they never told me. So my friend accompanied me there, mm. and we talked about it. I just told her, Mom, there's some things that have kept in my heart for so long mm. that today I would want to release mm. and actually just tell you that I've forgiven it. Yes. So I told her all that I could remember, mm. all that happened, 
I also told her that I felt so bad. The times people would ask me, and you lie that something else, so it was not. Yes, so that helped. Mm. That was the beginning of my healing. I love that. The fact that you actually decided that um, this issue has been under the water because for long, for long it was under the water. You know, no one would talk about it. But now what you're saying is forgiveness is acknowledging that this is how I'm feeling and then now being able to bring it out. You know, I think I really appreciate that you are able to talk about it. And um, your friend, I, 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 it's really encouraging that she walked with you. You know, there are times when you're going through things, you know, there are times you need someone to just strength, give you strength because on your own, you might not, you know. And so uh, I always encourage um, I call them circle of friends. You know, there are people that uh, we need to be able to have in our lives. People can hold us, that can hold our hands, especially when you're going through things and you don't know they're difficult things. Like, like now what um, uh, Eunice is sharing about today, that it was a very painful time. But just being able to acknowledge was, able to, was the first point. But also now having uh, a friend or someone who could be able to tell her the truth or who could be able to carry her and lead her to God. You know, there are times you can also have friends that they don't lead us to God. Maybe they tell us, yeah, why could they do that? You know, why, you know, but just to see that you can have a friend who can be able to lead you to God. But also I think as you're sharing, one of the things that I'm seeing is um, forgiveness is a process. You know, you don't just wake up in the morning and you feel like, yes, I'm forgiven, you know. It's a process, so you, 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 the thing is just to keep being patient, you know, being uh, uh, still acknowledging that, yeah, I'm still in pain, I'm still feeling this, you know. But also, I, I just going back and now talking to her and telling her that I acknowledge what you did hurt me, but I choose to forgive. How was, um, I'm trying to think, uh, so that was your initiative. How did it go on the other side? <laughs> You know, sometimes, uh, I'm not saying that after that, in my entire life, I never got hurt by some other people. Mm -hmm. But the expectation of, at, at least me, if not everyone, mm -hmm. the expectation is if I come to you, Liz, and I tell you, when you did this, I felt this. Yeah. I want to see you, like, I want to see you sorrowful. Yes. And, you know, like, also and apologizing. Like, and so apologetic, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But I can tell you for free, that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. So she was like, oh, in fact, she was busy doing her things because we went to see her at her shop, a business place. She was like, oh, <laughs> if I put it the way she put it in her mother tongue, you just laugh. <laughs> wow. It's yes. like, it's not a big deal. It's like, why are you bringing up this thing? My, my friend is Pascaline. So mm. she was like, oh. So say you know, manager, you may find your Pascalia, but if you're going to buy it, like you, you had to carry her all, all the way to the top one. Wow, uh, that was the reaction. Mm. But she's my mom. Mm. I expect, at least, I didn't expect so much. Yeah. My expectation was just having the courage to tell her and to let go. Mm. Yes. So what you're saying is, forgiveness is not determined by how the other person yeah. reacts. Yes. Because there are times when we feel like I, I will forgive when they see or they know, they understand, you know, or they are apologetic they sorry. or they say sorry, you know, but I think what uh, I'm seeing is that um, I can choose to forgive, you know, because actually I'm thinking, what if, you know, there are times we are hurt and the people who hurt us are even bereaved. You know, what does that mean? Will I live with it? No. You know, I can choose to be able to forgive that person. So, wow, thank you so much for sharing that. So, how is your relationship with mom, even as we come to, we are summarizing now? <laughs> yes, our relationship today is so great. Mm. Mom, if this happens to reach you out there, just know that I love you so much. I appreciate you. You are so special to me, even today. Yeah, so we share a very unique bond. I think after that, people are different. There are those who will tell you, I'm sorry. Yeah. We experience this even in our marriages. Mm. <laughs> some hey, some no. of, I was told some of them could be me. Maybe yeah. we don't even say sorry, but we yeah. do actions yeah. that, that, that actually that. communicate mm. we are sorry. So after that, I started getting gifts from her. She would be like, just give me gifts. All the handbags I carry today, I've not bought any of them. Wow. <laughs> She's the one who bought me all those handbags. That's special. She would do me shopping. You know, it should be the other way around. Mm. You doing shopping and taking to mom. Wow. But she would shop and just send my siblings to bring mm. 
So I think in a way that relationship was mended and slowly we are somewhere else. You know actually as you're saying I'm thinking probably she might not have told you yes. but that also released her. Yes, yes. You know because she might not say yes I agree but I'm sure it also really set her free. set her free and maybe that's why she was now reaching out to you and talking to you. Wow, that is really encouraging. So what we are seeing today is that you've moved from being a bitter person, growing up, growing up you didn't know, but at some point you realized, wow, I'm actually bitter. Yes. I'm actually an angry person. Mm -hmm. But now you reached a point that you are like, um, I choose to forgive. Yes. So let me ask you, what keeps you going today? What keeps me going is, I know as we grow, as we continue in this journey of life, we still step on each other's toes. Mm. But uh, for me, because I've experienced hurt before, I pray that should I hurt someone, that God gives me the eyes to see that I actually hurt Liz and go back to her and tell her I am sorry. Because my actions can really destroy yeah. how this person is going to grow, or even our children, how mm -hmm. they grow mm -hmm. the rest of their life. Yeah. I am a teacher. This has made me so cautious, mm -hmm. by the way. I am so cautious of my actions. Mm -hmm. What I tell a child, mm -hmm. how I correct a child, really matters wow. to me because I know if I was affected from three years mm -hmm. <laughs> and That's I came so to deal with this thing when I was about 25 or wow. so years, mm -hmm. you see, so if I'm going to affect somebody's child that mm -hmm. is under my care mm -hmm. for that long, yeah. I don't think I'll be able to maybe now, the big burden will be now for giving myself. Yeah. Yes, so again, knowing that it could not, maybe not me hurting someone because yeah. I'm now aware people will still hurt me anyway. And because people will hurt me, I, I make a deliberate decision knowing that nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Nothing shall separate wow. me from the love of God. Love yes. That's, that's so awesome. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God. I just um, appreciate, as, as you as you've shared, I, I feel like you've really uh, carried us through. And I don't know where you are at. I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know um, how how this topic resonates with you. Probably you've been hurt. Probably you've gone through some uh, pain and even right now you're feeling so bitter and you feel like you can never forgive. Maybe it's even worse than even what we are talking about and um, you just feel like you guys, you don't know what I'm going through. I just want to tell you that even as Eunice has shared today, that uh, there is still hope. There is still hope. Hope, you know, and uh, one passage that always really encourages me is Romans 12. Um, so actually, let's read Romans 12 from verse 17. The Bible says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it's written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing so, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That is a great passage that if you are hurting, and it's a very difficult passage, but when you think about it and you decide to surrender and let God be able to do it for you, then the Bible is saying he is the one who will do it for you. You know, uh, because when we carry bitterness, as we've said, it's, it, it is so heavy, but when we let go, go, God is able to fight for us. The last verse, verse 21 says, do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, and so it's so easy for us to be overcome by evil, so that when evil is done to us, we want to do evil. We want to think evil. But what the Bible is saying that yes, evil can be done to us, but we can be able to overcome it with good. And so I don't know what is the, 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 the evil that has been done to you, 
I know that God knows that uh, that has been done to you and he can be able to actually still raise you to be able to overcome it. And so thank you so much. Uh, it was really nice. Thank you so much that you could be with us. Uh, please check us on uh, the next page, uh, the next uh, video that we'll be doing. But I want to just thank Uni so, so much. I don't know if you have some uh, parting shots, something that you'd like to share maybe with uh, uh, the viewers who are viewing us today. And maybe someone is just going through so much pain, uh, maybe from their past. And you know, the past can even be yesterday. Yeah. You know, I don't know what, what is it that you can encourage someone right now who is feeling so hurt right now or bitter. Yeah, for me, what I like to tell you is bitterness is toxic. It's more toxic than the harmful substances that people smoke, drink. Mm. It's toxic because it, it, it affects your soul, mm. you see. Wow. Yeah, so if... I, I just pray that you take it upon yourself and walk the journey mm. towards forgiveness. You know, it's toxic because it's the poison you take yeah. and you expect the other person to die. Mm, actually, they say that. <laughs> yes, that, and that they like to actually moving on. I know. <laughs> yes. yeah. So take it upon yourself. If you're the one who was hurt, yeah. take it upon yourself and start the journey mm. towards forgiveness if you said you did. And if you hurt someone, also, take it upon yourself and set them free. Yeah. It's also okay if you go to them and tell them you're sorry. Mm. Yes, thank you. Wow, <laughs> thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.